sometimes I feel like I'm not even a book reviewer. <gasps> this book is amazing. I would haunt their ass so hard. They never got peace. Hey guys, so today we're doing such an exciting video. I've been so, so excited to start working on this. Basically, I'm going to be reading Booktube's favorite books of 2021. I did a video, I think back in like 2018, where I read Booktuber's favorite books, and it was such a fun experience, and I've been wanting to do it ever since then. I love watching other Booktubers film this same video. So I decided this year I'm going to be doing that concept, but a little bit different. I basically am, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be watching every Every single favorites video that pops up into my subscription feed from booktubers that I follow and I am going to be writing down every book that all the booktubers mention and the ones that are mentioned on the most favorites lists those are the ones that I'm gonna be reading so I'm not reading like a specific booktubers favorite book I'm gonna be reading the books that overall booktubers that I follow these are their favorites Today is December 26th. I just got back from my Christmas at my parents' house. People have already started posting their videos. I wasn't planning on starting this process until January. There are four booktubers who have posted their favorites videos as of today. Katie, Kat, Gabby, and Gavin. So I watched all of their videos and I wrote down all of their selections. So the books that popped up on multiples of these videos was Near the Bone, which came up on both Gabby and Kat's videos, as well as Stolen Tongues, which also came up on Gabby and Kat's. And then Gabby and Katie both had The Push and Finlay Donovan is Killing It. So out of these four books, the only one that I've heard of is Near the Bone by Christina Henry, but the other three I've never heard of before. So basically I'm just gonna keep periodic checking in throughout this month whenever a new batch of videos have come out and I've watched them and I will keep updating with what the book selections are. These four books that I just mentioned might end up as finalists or they might get knocked off but we'll see how it goes. Okay so we have another update. I've watched another batch of videos. So I've watched videos now from Reagan, Jenanine, Sarah, Erin, Kayla, Jan, Monet, and Deja. And we have new book updates. We have another addition to The Push. Monet had it on her list alongside Gabby and Katie. And then there were three booktubers who had In My Dreams I Hold a Knife on their lists. Gabby, Sarah, and Kayla. And then No Exit was on Katie and Sarah's lists. So as of right now, we have two front runners. That is The Push and In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife, both with three booktubers. So I've now watched the last batch of videos. In this batch, we have videos from Joel, Nicole, Mayana, Elias, Jesse, Ashley, Mina, Ali, Starla, and Marcy. And this batch of videos has changed a lot. So we have a lot of books that were on just two booktubers lists, and even though they're not gonna be making the finalists, I did wanna mention them. So we have Keeper of the Night, which was on both Jan and Marcy's videos. The Beautiful Ones, which was on both Mina and Jenny's videos, as well as Atlas Six was on both Mina and Jenny. And then the last one that was only on two lists was The Sword of Kaigen, which both Reagan and Starla had. So then with three booktubers, we had Razorblade Tears, Starla, Gabby, and Jesse all had this on their lists. Then Jade Legacy was on Mina, Reagan, and Aaron's lists. Finlay Donovan is Killing It was mentioned by two more booktubers, so that's a total of four with Gabby, Katie, Nicole, and Mayana. As well as The Push was mentioned by one more booktuber with a total of four. Four, Gabby, Katie, Monet, and Marcy. So there were so many books that were only on two booktubers lists, but there are four books that three or more booktubers had mentioned, and those are gonna be the ones that I am reading. So for our finalists, the first book that I will be reading is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. This was on three booktubers lists, Kayla, Sarah, and Gabby. The next book also on three lists was Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. This was on Gabby, Jesse, and Starla's lists. And then with four booktubers, we have The Push, which was on Marcy, Monet, Katie, and Gabby's lists. And then lastly, also with four booktubers, we have Finlay Donovan is Killing It. This was on Gabby, Katie, Nicole, and Mayana's lists. You might have noticed <laughs> that all of these books were on Gabby's lists. 
I don't know if Gabby is just like the number one influencer and she's out here influencing all these booktubers to pick up books, but I did think that that was interesting that she had the most in common with all of the booktubers that I follow. So out of these four books, I'm really excited because two of them are ones that I had already heard of and I are actually already own and those were In My Dreams I Hold a Knife and Razor Blade Tears. I actually had to go dig this out of my closet because this is a book that I got from Book of the Month and it's just not something that is immediately like my kind of book. So I had it in my closet. I had to go find it. Wasn't sure if I still had it, but I do thankfully. But this book has been high up on my TBR. So many people have recommended this to me. So I'm really excited that this ended up as one of the finalists. And then the other two books, Finlay Donovan and The Push, I had never heard of before starting this video. Literally never heard of before. It's funny because I actually think that I had seen the cover of Finlay Donovan before, but I always sort of like when anyone was talking about it, I immediately ignored it because it looked like that one book, what's it called? Where do you go burn a debt or something? It looked like that book so much that I thought it was like a sequel to it or something. So anytime someone talked about it, like I just automatically stopped paying attention. Wait a damn minute. <laughs> Wait a damn. So I'm going to order both of those books. The Push and Finlay Donovan and then I think February 1st I will be starting and reading these books. The next book I have is Finley Donovan. I love this book. This book is about this woman who like everything she's like down on her down in life you know like her husband's trying to take her kids she can't write that book and one day she's sitting in a Panera Bread talking with her agent about her next book which is going to be you know a crime thriller book and somebody overhears her in the Panera Bread and they think she's talking about real life murder and so then they offer her fifty thousand dollars to kill her husband. This book was so good and so surprising because it literally came out of nowhere for me at least. It was just a lot of fun. I was cackling while reading this book but I was also tense when I needed to be tense. And it's so funny, it's so witty, it's so entertaining. The ending of this book had me like screaming because I was like where's book number two? Okay, so I am a couple chapters into Finlay Donovan. Finlay? Is it Finlay or Finley? I'm gonna have to figure that out. <clears throat> Sorry if my voice is a little scratchy. I woke up with a sore throat. I'm not having the best morning. I just wanna crawl back in bed. But I feel like this is gonna be the perfect, like laying in bed, it's raining out, feel good, just forget all of my problems kind of book. And that's exactly what I need right now. So like you guys just saw, this book is following this woman who's an author and she's just like really been down on her luck. She hasn't been able to finish her next book that she already took the advance out on. She has this douchebag ex-husband that she's dealing with who's trying to get custody of their children from her. She owes him money, like things are just really not going well for her. And one day she's meeting with her agent in a Panera and they're talking about her next book and the way that they are <laughs> discussing this book makes them seem so suspicious. And this woman overhears their conversation and thinks that Finley is an assassin for hire and she slips a note into her bag saying, I will pay you $50,000 if you kill my husband. He's a bad man. And I'm just assuming like how the rest of the book is gonna go is just gonna be her like getting deeper and deeper into this very insane scenario. I said this in one of my videos, I can't remember which one, but this really reminds me of the show Good Girls, which like, can we just take a minute to mourn that show? That show was so good. And they canceled it. I'm not over it. I'm not over it. But hopefully this is going to be giving me those same vibes. I already am kind of like seeing it, especially with her being a mom who really needs to make money and then finds herself in this sketchy scenario and doing things she never thought that she would do. That's like literally the premise of Good Girls. Okay, I can feel my voice going. I'm gonna go make some tea, crawl back in bed and read some more of this. But I'm enjoying it so far. I'm really excited to see where it goes. The person that she was hired to kill his phone password is Milkman. Disgusting! I don't need to know what else he did. I don't need to know. He should die for just that. So I actually switched to the audiobook so that I could close my eyes. So let me see how far I am now. I'm on chapter 17, so I'm 120 pages into this now and I'm really loving it. It is so entertaining. It's giving me even more Good Girls vibes now because she's not working alone. Somebody 
caught her doing something and they now wanted in on it. So she now has a partner in crime and I like them as like a duo. Basically, she's just fallen into this like total rabbit hole of like craziness. There's a mystery that she needs to solve so that she is not framed for a murder. And so the way that she's doing that is that since she's a crime author, she is like writing everything that's happened as one of her books and like trying to get into the mind of the like characters. And there's a line that says, how hard could it be to solve my own crime? It's so cool. I'm just loving it. I'm loving her as a character because she's like really flawed, but in a endearing way. Everything that she's done so far, I'm like, I could fully see myself being in the same situation and making the same exact decisions. And I don't know, I just love following like a normal person, a normal character in these really complicated situations of like crime. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm just gonna stay in bed, keep reading. Okay, I know that I mentioned Finlay's like sidekick. I'm obsessed with her because Finlay was like a little bit more hesitant in this whole situation. Like she didn't really want to be involved. It was like all accidental. But Vero is so funny and like I relate to her so much more because she needed no information. She's like, I got student loans. Say no more. Say no more. Just give me 40%. I love that about her. Okay, so I have finished Finlay Donovan is killing it. I fucking loved this book. This was so much fun. I feel like this had the perfect blend of like humor and drama and suspense. I love Finlay as a main character. I loved the side characters. I have now seen that this is being adapted into a Netflix show. Someone is adapting it into a show and I literally cannot wait. I feel like this is gonna make the perfect show. I already mentioned this. It has very strong good girls vibes and I definitely felt that as I was reading it. It has the same balance of that show with the humor and the drama and the tenseness. And I'm so, so glad this is not a standalone. It's a series. I actually ordered the second book literally as soon as I started reading this because I knew that I would want to read the sequel and it just came out today. I cannot wait to read this one, especially with like the cliffhanger that this one ended on. Essentially like this book has a mystery in it that is concluded so it does have like a definitive ending but then there's just like a little a little sprinkle of a new mystery that is going to lead right into this book and I cannot wait to read that. This was so fantastic. I think I'm giving this five stars. I just feel like it's very rare to find a book that is humorous and actually funny. I find a lot of times that humor in books is just very cringy. It's not funny. I could just see this translating into a show so well and being so funny. And I can't believe that I went an entire year of people reading and recommending this book and my brain just wasn't paying attention. This is so good. If you need to be convinced to read it, I hope that I've convinced you. So now we're gonna go into the next book that I'm reading, which is The Push. And that is going to be The Push by Ashley Audrain. This book will have you like questioning everything you think you know about motherhood, about men and husbands and fathers and daughters and like the relationship that you should have with your kids or like expect to have with your kids. We're following this wife and she's talking about her relationship with her husband, how great it was, how fantastic, but he wants to have a baby and she's not so sure about it because just the history within her family with mothers is not so great. She didn't have a great relationship with her mom. Finally, she agrees she's gonna have a baby with her husband, they get pregnant, they end up having a little girl. So she has a daughter, Violet, and she doesn't really have a connection with her and she doesn't act the way that children she feels like normally do and she feels like there's something wrong with her. Now her husband says it's all in her head and every time he's dismissing her fears, Blythe is becoming more questioning on whether or not he's right and she's crazy. And then as the reader, you're also starting to question Blythe's narration. This one's much more of a slow burn character study into the mind of this mother. But this is just one of the best written books that I've read this year. And I just love how smart and clever this book is. So I actually started this this morning and so far I'm really enjoying it. It is actually told in second person and I've said this many times that second person when it's done well 
is my favorite style of writing. This is written as like a long letter from this woman to her ex-husband going through their entire marriage and them becoming parents to their two children and then their subsequent divorce. And basically she's trying to explain to him from her side, her, her point of view, why she does not love their daughter. <laughs> this book deals a lot with the topic of motherhood and it looks at motherhood from a very different lens, one that I particularly am very interested in. As somebody who has absolutely zero desire to be a mother, I'm really loving the narrative in this book and how this main character, because of her own experience with her mother, she does not think that she will be a good mother. She doesn't really want to be a mother. And her husband convinces her to have a child, they have a daughter, and she immediately does not have a connection Connection with his daughter. She does not really love her. She thinks that there's something wrong with her daughter, that her daughter is like evil. There's just something not right there. And every time she tries to tell her husband, did you see what she just did? She doesn't love me. We are not connecting. He completely like gaslights her experience. Their daughter is daddy's little angel. She can do no wrong. He always takes their daughter's side. And he like puts a lot of blame on her for not being the perfect mother. And then they have another child, they have a son, and immediately she connects with this son. She now feels the motherly bond. Her son is her pride and joy, and it just sort of reinforces more the idea that there's something wrong with her daughter. But again, nobody believes her. I don't really want to say anymore. I'm already halfway into it. I was flying through it this morning. It also flips to different timelines. We're following actually three generations of mothers. So we're not only following the main character, we're following her mother when she had her and was not a great mom to her and we're following her grandmother when she had her mom and was not a great mom so she comes from a long line of like not good moms and we're following all those stories and kind of seeing how generational trauma is passed down and this endless cycle and it's really interesting because since she's the narrator and she's writing a letter it's all from her perspective we as the reader have to come up with our own conclusion of if she's right about her daughter if there's really something wrong with her daughter or if there's something wrong with her as a mother and she's just creating these things that she thinks she's seeing in her daughter to explain why she doesn't love her I'm loving it. It's so great. Like I said, I'm flying through it and it being told in second person works so well in this format. So yeah, like I said, I am halfway through. I think I'm going to be able to finish this today. I'm like, I'm flying through it. It's so interesting and I wouldn't necessarily call this a thriller. It's more so like an intense drama or just like a very deep psychological look into the mind of this one character. It's great. Oh my god, the last page killed me! <gasps> this book is amazing. Oh my god. I'm so, I, I, what? I swear I went through every single type of emotion in the last couple of pages. I thought I had a conclusion and then my conclusion changed five times in the span of like three pages. Oh my god, this is so good. This is so good. This was amazing. I feel like I want to give some trigger warnings because I don't know how people um, who are parents would feel about this, as well as big, big trigger warning for loss of a child. I would actually really be curious to know from those of you who have read this who are parents, I want to know like how you feel about it because obviously I read this from the lens of someone who doesn't want to be a mom, doesn't think I would be a good mom, has no desire to ever be pregnant, and so I related a lot to the feelings and thoughts of the main character. I loved it. There was also this really interesting conversation about mothers' bodies after they give birth, not in the physical, but in the sense of how people view someone's body after they give birth and their body is suddenly like not their own anymore and its worth is placed in how their body can provide for their family through having more kids, through breastfeeding. It's no longer something that belongs to that person, but it's viewed as being belonging to the family. That was just such a very interesting discussion. I feel like I could listen to an entire TED talk on just that talk. But yeah, this was great. I don't know what I want to rate it. I feel like... <sighs> I feel like I want to give it five stars. Oh my god, do we have two five stars already? I went the entire January not having any five stars and now we have two back to back. I think I'm gonna give this five stars. I think I was leaning more towards like a four, but then the ending, the ending pushed it up to a five. This was great. And this was a debut. 
Are you freaking kidding me? How is this a debut? Like Ashley Audrain really came out here and said, for my debut, I'm writing a second person psychological drama about a woman who is a terrible mother. And she fucking did it. And she killed it. I'm just, I'm amazed. Okay, it's been a couple days since I have read anything or checked in. Basically, I have let a Turkish drama take over my life. <laughs> I'm not sure what the title is because I don't know how to pronounce the name, but I'll put a picture of it here Basically, oh my god, it is so good It's about these two people who like enter into this contract to pretend to be engaged for two months so that he can make his ex jealous because she's about to get married to somebody and oh my god, That's like literally what the whole drama is about and it's so fucking good like the romance it's taken over my life. It also kind of ruined my sleep schedule because I started watching it at like 8 o'clock at night and I was like, oh, I'll just watch a couple episodes. So I watched four episodes and I was so like sucked in and I was like, okay, I should stop now and go to sleep. It's probably like midnight. I did not realize every episode is two hours. I thought I had watched about four hours. I'd watched eight. The sun was coming up. I watched eight hours straight without even realizing it, because it was just so good. So yeah, that's what I've been doing the past couple days and why I haven't been reading anything. This morning, I did start the next book, which is Razorblade Tears. Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. Oof! This is one of my favorite thrillers that I've read this year, and this is shocking because it's a revenge thriller. So this book is about two fathers who are, they're homophobic, and their sons are married to each other, and their lives are turned upside down when their sons are murdered and so they end up teaming up and going on a, a mission to put the people in the ground who murdered their babies. They are two old men against the world powered by the love for their sons, vengeance, hate, and regret. This book also discusses race and privilege. It talks about uh, the relationships between fathers and sons. This book just packs such an emotional punch all while still delivering on all the good stuff. So out of all of the books, I think that this is the one that is the least in the realm of things that I normally pick up, but I am still excited. Like I, I do every once in a while like to branch out and read something that I normally would never probably pick up. And I do really love revenge stories. Although I'm realizing, I don't think that I've ever read a revenge story from the point of view of a parent getting revenge for something that happened to their children. So that's gonna be like a, a difference. I did start it this morning. I read about 50 pages. I'm listening to it on audio and the audiobook is great. I will say though that I'm not... <sighs> I know that it's gonna be a journey and a process with seeing these two fathers who are homophobic, like unpacking that homophobia. And I'm sure that that's gonna be like something that happens through the course of the book. But I'm just, I'm kind of struggling a little bit to even root for these dads because like... They were kind of terrible. They were kind of really terrible. And I don't really know if I'm loving this idea of like them only deciding to be good parents and to not be homophobic after their sons died. Like that's really what it took. That's what it took for them to be like, you know what, maybe it's okay that my son likes dudes. It took them being brutally murdered Huh? Maybe this is just my own, like, my own trauma coming out, but like, say I had a parent who was a terrible parent, and then after I die, that parent decided, you know what, actually, maybe I should have been a better parent to her. I would fucking haunt them. I would haunt their ass so hard. They never got peace. They never would get peace. So I don't know. I'm only 50 pages in. Maybe as the book is going on and like these fathers unpack all of that more, I will root for them, but like right now, I'm not loving them as people and main characters. So we'll see how it goes. I never film from this angle, but like this is kind of cute. Also, yes, I do still have my Halloween decor up on this bookshelf. It looked too good and fit the vibe too well to take it down. But anyways, I finished Razorblade Tears. Um, this was a very quick book to get through. So far, all of these books have been very, very quick fast paced reads and the audiobook was fantastic i definitely recommend if you are going to read this listen to the audiobook the narrator amazing however 
I enjoyed this book. I want to preface everything I'm about to say with I enjoyed this book. I really specifically liked the discussions around race and class and the intersection of that and how you can ha you can be somebody who has white privilege but not class privilege and the ways in which those sort of combine the two dads that we're following one of them is a black man and the other is a white man and the black man he has more class privilege he owns his own business he has a home he has a car like he's financially better off and the white dad is very low class he lives in a trailer he doesn't have money he doesn't really have a job like he's in a much lower class and so they talk about how while he might have white privilege and there are inherent things that that grants him he does not have class privilege and since we live in such an economic based society um there's a lot of ways in which like you might view somebody as having more privilege than somebody else because of the way that they look when they their class differences could completely change that perception i just thought that was an interesting conversation because i really don't see a lot of books tackling class differences and um economic privilege so that was interesting i loved all of that I just don't think that this book was really for me. I would recommend it to people who like intense, gritty, action-packed dramas. That's just not something that I typically read. I am glad though that I tried it. I'm not mad that I read it. I think that this would make a fantastic movie and I feel like I would probably enjoy it more as a movie than I did as a book. So I'm struggling with how I want to rate this because I recognize that this is a really great book. It just was a case of like, it's not the book, it's me. I think I'm gonna give this 3.5 stars. Oh, that just feels too low. Like, it was not a bad book. I don't know. I don't know, ratings are so stupid. I think I'm gonna give it 3.5. See, I don't want the fact that I'm giving this 3.5 stars to deter anyone from reading this because it's such an interesting book with like such layered discussions. Like the amount of like intersectionality that this book tackles and not just obviously like race and class, but sexuality, gender, like it just tackles so many topics and I feel like it does it so well. I'm like talking myself into giving this four stars. I don't know. I feel like I'm not gonna rate it. I just I can't decide. I'll decide later. It was a good book It was just not for me. So my conclusion Good book not for me. Sometimes I feel like I'm not even a book reviewer Went out and got myself a Starbucks so that I can start the next book which is in my dreams I hold a knife by Ashley Winstead. This is the last book that I'm gonna be reading a five-star thriller is few and far between so in My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead is my favorite of the year. This story follows a group of college friends and it's all about them becoming friends, like being a really close-knit group and then one of them getting murdered and them not knowing who did it. Many years later, they go to this college reunion and it's sort of like a whodunit, like which of us was the one that actually murdered our friend. I just thought the mystery aspect of this book was so interesting. It was so fun. I loved the atmosphere of all of this, you know, taking place on this college campus. It was very addictive. Out of all of the books, this is the one that I feel like I'm gonna like the most. It was the only one that I had already had on my TBR and that I was really excited about. A lot of people have told me that this is gonna be like the perfect thriller for me, which makes me so excited. However, I have been putting off reading it because there is no audiobook. And you guys know how I prefer to read with an audiobook. So I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna try to read a little bit of it and we'll see how it goes. It's just one of those things like I know that I'm really gonna love it once I start reading it. But the fact that there is no audiobook, I just feel like, like I already feel tired. I already feel tired trying to read it. But we're gonna give it a go. And hopefully physically reading it doesn't make my experience with this book bad. Okay, I don't have a coherent update because it's 2 a.m. But I love this book. I love it. I can't stop reading it. It's so good. It's so good. I love it. I love it. What are you reading, Riley? I'm not reading a romance. I'm reading a thriller. In my dreams, I hold a knife. It's really good so far. And there actually is a romance in it. I don't know if it's going to have like an HEA. I'm going to assume no. But for now, I'm digging it. <laughs> So today is Valentine's Day. I have absolutely no plans today other than to read and I have a couple like Valentine's Day themed horror movies that I want to watch today. But other than that, I'm not going to be doing anything. I did go a little bit overboard on my Valentine's Day look today. I wasn't planning on doing one, but then I just, once I started, I couldn't stop. But I think I look cute. I have um, 50 pages left of this book and I do not know how this is going to end. 
because the first like big reveal just happened but there's still 50 pages left okay hold on let me rewind because I don't think I have given you any of my thoughts about this book I'm obsessed with it I love it this is amazing this is amazing the next 50 pages are going to be determining if this is my all-time favorite thriller ever or if it's just a great thriller but I'm already so obsessed with it okay rewind let me tell you what it's about so basically we're following this group of friends they met when they were freshmen in college and they formed like a really tight friend group they were very popular on campus and then in their senior year one of the friends in the group was murdered and the person that was accused of the murder was her boyfriend another member of the friend group but there wasn't enough evidence to charge him so he was given a not guilty verdict now it is 10 years later and they're all attending their 10 year reunion someone has decided that this is the perfect opportunity to get them all together and force them to admit who is the actual murderer so this book flips back and forth between timelines so we're following them in present day at the reunion we're following the main character jessica then we're also flipping back to when they were in college and we're seeing flashbacks of their four years at college but what's really cool is that the flashbacks aren't told in chronological order so you're kind of jumping around through their four years at college at different points and i'm loving that because it's like you're just getting the perfect right amount of information that you need at that moment. Oh, the reveals are slowly placed throughout the book. All of these characters have secrets and things that they were hiding now, things that they were hiding in college. It is messy. It is so messy and filled with drama. Like, I don't even care who the murderer is. I'm not even thinking about that because I'm so wrapped up in the drama and the mess, especially like the romantic drama. Listen, you guys know, I, I'm a romance book hub. I love romance and there is a great romance in here. There's romance drama. So it's like not a love triangle, not a love square. It's like a love hexagon and it's the mess, the mess, the drama. I'm living for it. I have to read you guys this one quote because I did not expect to go into this getting a swoon worthy romance. I have to read you what this guy said to her. Tell me this is not straight out of a romance book, okay? He says, do the wrong thing with me. I promise I will make you happy. I will love you for the rest of my life. I'm going to do it anyway. I accepted that a long time ago, but please do it with me. I love him. I love this romance. I do. I swear to God, if they don't end up together, I'm nervous. I'm nervous because this is not a romance book. I also am loving the main character. She says over and over throughout the book that she's not a good person, and I love characters like that. So I'm gonna sit here and finish the last 50 pages, but I'm nervous. What's gonna happen? Because like I said, I'm pretty sure this chapter is the re is the murder. I'm about to see what happened, but there's still so much pages left. I want to try to get my reaction to the ending on camera because I'm expecting it to be great. We'll see. Oh my god, wait. I totally forgot the murder happens on Valentine's Day because they have, they're having like a sweetheart dance and it happens after the, the dance. Oh my god, how did I not realize that I'm reading a book about a murder that takes place on Valentine's Day? On Valentine's Day. I could not have planned this any better. Oh my god, I knew it! I fucking knew it, I knew it. I knew it. Okay, I have one chapter left. I called who the murderer was, but like, not in a predictable, it's bad kind of way. This is so good. This is so good. There's one chapter left. Depending on what happens in this chapter, this is gonna be an all-time favorite thriller. If what I think is about to happen is about to happen. Because I had a theory very early on, and so far that theory has not been proven true. But I am still holding on to it. So we'll see. This chapter is kind of make or break it. I'm gonna give this book five stars regardless, but this could make it my favorite thriller ever. So we'll see. Oh my god. Oh my god. I knew it! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. You guys. The last line of this book is so good. I feel like I need a minute. I need a minute. This is my favorite thriller ever. This was so good. <laughs> okay, I need a minute. I need to I need to I need to collect my thoughts. 
Why am I this zoomed in? I'm all the way zoomed out. What is going on? This isn't right. This is not right. It's all the way zoomed out. I hate this. Y'all do not need to see my face this close. Oh my God. No, okay, here we go. That was so weird. For some reason it wouldn't like, <laughs> it wouldn't like zoom back out. I've had time to think about this. This is my all-time favorite thriller. This was so perfectly something that I love. A while ago, I did a video all about thrillers, and I said in that video specific things that I liked in thrillers and things that I really didn't like, and in the comments of that, so many people said, like, girl, you gotta read this. Y'all were right. Y'all were right. This had everything that I love, and it was perfect. It was perfect. It was amazing. I'm shocked. I am shocked at how much I loved this. I knew that I would like it, but I did not realize I would like it this much. I think that this is my favorite book that I read so far this year. I feel like I need to say this is not like a revolutionary thriller, but I feel like it is done so well that it doesn't even matter that it's not like, there's not some like crazy huge plot twist or that's a little bit predictable. Like it didn't even matter. The characters were excellent. The pacing, amazing. Everything was revealed at the exact perfect time where like you were given enough clues as a reader to figure something out right when the reveal is about to happen. I loved flipping back and forth between the two timelines. I loved the drama. I loved the school setting to this. The writing was amazing. I loved the narrator. I loved being in her head. I loved the romance. Oh my god. Five stars. Amazing. Incredible. Immaculate. Brilliant. Breathtaking. So, with that, I have now read all of the books for this little vlog experiment, and I think that this went way better than I ever even expected it to, because three of the books were five stars. And even the one, Razor Blade Tears, that wasn't five stars, I gave this 3.5 stars. I still enjoyed it, and I'm glad that I read it, and I can fully understand why these were the favorites and the most mentioned books out of all the booktubers that I follow. I can see why these are everyone's favorites, especially I can see why these are those specific booktubers favorite books. Like it makes sense to me as I was reading them. I was like, yeah, it makes sense that each of these booktubers loved these books. If I were to rank these in terms of my enjoyment, Razorblade Tears obviously is in the bottom and then In My Dreams I Hold a Knife is definitely at the top. I don't know about the push and Finley Donovan. I feel like I like them equally and they're so different. Like they could not be more different. I don't know. I think I liked the push more, only slightly more than Finley Donovan. But they're like so close neck and neck. So there's my ranking. I'm just amazed at how well this went. This could not have gone any better. So I'm gonna have every single booktuber that I mentioned in this video linked in the description, as well as a playlist of all of the favorites videos that I watched. So if you guys wanna go take a look at them. Also, it's a really good look at who I follow and the booktubers that I watch. I really hope you guys liked this video. This has been one of my favorite videos of recent to make. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you to all the booktubers who I uh, read books from in this video, even though they have absolutely no idea that they're unwilling participants in this. I still want to thank them. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!